Hey guys, today I'm going over a buyer's guide for VW's 2.5 liter motor. What you're seeing right now is my girlfriend's 2008 VW Rabbit. It has 210,000 miles, a 2.5 liter motor, and an automatic transmission. She purchased this with about 175,000 miles. It had rusty fenders and two check engine light codes. The fenders were fixed with VW's 12 year rust warranty. As for the check engine lights, it was a camshaft position sensor and a variable valve timing solenoid issue. Neither of these kept the car from driving, but a little extra oomph was available after they were replaced. These are both right on top of the engine and super easy to replace. You can do both of them in under 10 minutes. Now every part that's been replaced on this car, besides two, are an extremely common maintenance item on these motors. This is probably VW's most reliable gas motor besides the variations of the naturally aspirated 2 liters, but most people still prefer the 2.5 liter because of the extra power and it has a timing chain instead of the 2 liters timing belt. One thing I'm going to mention right off the bat is that FCP Euro is my go-to website for any European car parts I need. And I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I just really love their service. They have a lifetime warranty on everything, including oil and filters. You just pay return shipping. Wiper blades, spark plugs, oil changes, all nearly free. It makes these cars even cheaper to own, and they only sell high-quality OEM parts. Also, while I'm on that topic, please put VW502 spec oil in these motors. This car had an oil leak that suddenly stopped once the proper oil was used. Don't assume that any synthetic 5W40 will do, pay a little extra and get it done right. The common problems that this car has experienced is as follows. The PCV diaphragm needed to be replaced. Some people opt to just replace the PCV diaphragm, but it's common for issues to come back after replacement. The solution to this, and the VW recommended solution, is to replace the entire valve cover with the valve cover gasket. I went ahead and replaced the entire valve cover, but like I said, some do get away with just the $15 diaphragm. However, it's also common to leak from the valve cover, so it's not a horrible idea to just get both out of the way. And with FCP's lifetime parts warranty, and this being about a 20 minute job, it's not uncommon for people to do this preventatively. When the PCV needs to be replaced, the idle won't be super smooth. The 2.5 liter isn't the smoothest running engine, but a small tear in the PCV will cause a slightly off idle and may not cause a check engine light. The N80 or EVAP purge valves can go out on these cars. There are a few tests you can do to verify if this is working, but it's not always reliable. The tests are sending the electrical signal to open the valve through VCDS or OBD11, and taking the valve out to see if you can blow through it both ways. It should be a one-way valve, but they can get stuck open. As I mentioned earlier though, these tests aren't always reliable. They can randomly get stuck open or closed for various reasons. For me, I ended up replacing it to rule it out as a cause for a P0171 code I was intermittently getting, and so far, so good on that front. This is pretty easy, it's right on top of the motor. The hardest part for me was actually getting the hoses off, and that's just because it was about 40 degrees out when I decided to do it. The blend door actuator needed to be replaced. When this goes out, your recirculation flap will be stuck closed, stuck open, and or click randomly. This is easy to test. If you set the fans to 3 and hit the recirculate button, the blower motor should get louder and it should push out more air. If it doesn't, or if it clicks, almost like you're tapping on something inside of the dashboard, it needs to be replaced. The vacuum pump had a leak. This is very common and might look like a rear main seal leak. There are various kits to reseal the pump, but it's common to just delete the pump and reroute the brake booster to use the PCV system's vacuum. If you opt to reseal the bad pump, you're just putting it off until the gaskets fail again. The theory as to why these fail so easily is that the different pieces of the pump are made of different materials. So when they heat up, they expand at different rates, causing a leak where the gasket isn't sealing anymore. The vacuum pump is an easier job to do on a manual than an automatic, but both are possible. VW doesn't see the vacuum pump as a serviceable piece. They don't think that you should take apart the bolts that are on it, which is what you need to do to reseal it or take it out without dropping the automatic transmission. However, like I said, there's lots of resealing kits, so while the dealership won't do it, it's something you can definitely do at home or refer your mechanic to do. Or you can just go the route that I went and completely delete it and solve that issue for good. And lastly, probably the least common, it needed a crankshaft position sensor. I would assume this is more due to road debris than anything else, and while it isn't super common, I felt like I should include it on this list. The car was stalling at idle and would sometimes be down on power when trying to accelerate, also intermittent hard start problems. This job is super quick, easy, and it'll take you longer to gather your tools than do the actual repair. Otherwise, the car did need a new CV shaft on the driver's side. I believe this was due to Minnesota weather, and it also needed a new flex pipe. Also, probably due to Minnesota weather. 
At some point I did replace the spark plugs and ignition coils, but it wasn't due to any misfire, it was just something I wanted to do before it went on a long road trip. So that is what my personal experience has been taking care of this high mileage example for 35,000 miles. Some extra information regarding the 2.5 liter. Avoid the 2005 and early 2006 models. These had timing chain tensioner issues. That part has been updated, and there's a caveat to this. If the owner or Carfax report of some kind can show documentation of the timing chain getting any work done, it probably has the updated tensioner, and it'll be super reliable like the later 2.5 liters. The 2008 and up cars have an extra 20 horsepower. This might not seem huge, but going from 150 to 170 is a nice bump. The 2008.5 and up cars don't have a MAF sensor. This 2008 has 170 horsepower and also has a MAF, and some people seem to think that only cars without a MAF have 170 horsepower, but this isn't true. These are less common, but they're not rare by any means. The 2.5 liter will sound like it has a slight clink to them when running. This is just injector noise and nothing to be worried about. If you're looking for extra power, there are a lot of things you can do to this car, but the most common things are an intake and an exhaust. With those mods, you're likely to see a reasonable boost in power numbers, but more noticeably, better throttle response. The factory intake on these is pretty restrictive and has a dumb design in my opinion. The theory is that this was done so that the 2.5 liter didn't sound so loud in the cabin. I don't think it has excessive road noise anyway though. Also, when you do have an intake and an exhaust on these, they sound absolutely amazing. <laughs> The last thing I'm going to mention is the transmissions. These things are fairly reliable. This auto box has over 200,000 miles on it and no issues at all. But when abused, the manuals can have DMF chatter. This is a grinding or chattering noise when the clutch is released in neutral. Sometimes when this happens, owners will opt to replace the flywheel with a single mass flywheel, but that causes noises of its own. If you do hear a noise, ask the owner if it's been switched to a single mass flywheel. As for replacing a bad DMF, it's up to you if you want the single mass flywheel which can take a lot more abuse, or the DMF for quieter operation. For the automatics, they can sometimes hard shift when coming to a stop. This is typically an issue with the transmission software learning, or the shift solenoids. If the issue happens in drive, but not in sport, drive around in sport for a day or two, and it should resolve itself. If it happens in both situations, my honest recommendation would be to manual swap it. If that's not an option, Rebuilding these transmissions or swapping to a known good used one are both totally fine ideas. So here's a shopping list check slash a too long didn't watch. The usual items, tire wear, service history if available, suspension feel. Bring a code reader and check for any issues. Sometimes there can be a pending code if the owner has recently erased the codes. For all years, check the valve cover gasket. Check for oil on top of the transmission. This is likely an issue with the vacuum pump. And as somebody who just recently put the delete kit in, there is still a little bit of oil on top of the transmission for this thing. If I was to go sell it tomorrow and somebody pointed it out, I would just grab a shop towel, wipe underneath the, uh, well, the delete insert now, but what would be the vacuum pump, and show that it's dry and that it's not an active leak and it's just sweating off the old oil residue. The HVAC recirculation flap, just hit the button, see if it works as expected. Verify the auto trans doesn't shift down hard when coming to a stop, and if you've got a manual transmission, verify that it doesn't have excessive flywheel noise. For 2006 and under, verify it's got the updated timing tensioner. It's honestly easier to seek out a 2007 and up car, but if you can verify the service history shows the updated tensioner installed, or if it's a late 2006 built car, you're probably in the clear. With all of that out of the way, this has been a super reliable car. It's never been stuck on the side of the road or needed a tow. If I was suggesting a car in the $3,000 range, it would definitely be one of these. The build quality is great, the interior is leagues better than the competition, and it's not a boring car to drive. You can get the 2.5 in a hatchback through the Rabbit or Golf, in a sedan through the Jetta or a bigger sedan like the Passat, you can also get the Jetta wagon with it. So there's lots of options for the 2.5 and pretty much all of them were available with a manual transmission if you want that little bit of extra fun.